guys, welcome back to my channel and thanks for joining me again. This week we're going to explore some of those really beautiful and soulful country steel guitar bends. The two primary techniques at play here are going to be double stop string bends, mostly generated from triads, and volume swells. These two things are going to help us to approximate that pedal steel sound. For those of you who have seen my Americana open chord study, uh, titled Americana Open Chord Magic, you'll recognise this backing track, because it's the same one. The idea being that that study would have formed our accompaniment, and this study today is our solo. It's in the key of C, it's in 3-4 time, and our chord progression goes like this. 1, 2, 3, C to F. that kind of progression is extremely common. It's made up of three ingredients, the one, the four, and the five. C is the one, F is the four, G, or G7, is the five. So first of all, we'll focus on learning the notes here. We won't do the volume swells just yet. We'll add those as the kind of cherry on top later on. The first note of our solo starts right on that downbeat of the first bar. So the chord would be C, we're going to find our root note here at the 13th fret of the B string, but we're going to bend into it from a semitone below at the 12th fret. So a nice slow half step bend with a bit of vibrato on top. So of course if we're in the key of C we can be visualising a C major scale there. And we're bending from the 7th note to the octave of the root note. Now of course it's really important to have your scales fully mapped out across the fretboard I'd recommend using the five caged shapes as your way of organizing those groups of notes. Um, if you've not seen my video on People Get Ready, it goes into a lot of detail on this kind of thinking and my approach to it, so do check that out. But as a quick summary, in this position here, I'd be thinking of our C shape for the C major scale. Think of the full range. Think of your C major arpeggios within there as well. So that would be the third, the fifth and the root, the third, the fifth and the root, the third and the fifth. Now the next shape along is going to be our A shape, so that's going to look like this for the C major scale. And the arpeggio, C major arpeggio. gone out of the shape there just to finish with that root on top. Okay, so that's just a very quick primer on this stuff. Like I say, I go into more detail on this in that People Get Ready video, but I'd recommend exploring this stuff on your own time as well and try and get a very thorough picture of how these things map out across the entire fingerboard. Lesson materials for this will include tab and notation in Guitar Pro and PDF formats, as always, plus my backing track. And as usual, you can access those things through the links in the description. I have a Patreon page with over 700 members now. The place is fast growing and there's so much good stuff on there. Every week we add more and more to that archive of material. You certainly won't be short on inspiration if you join. But if that's not your thing, you can just purchase this one lesson in particular at the Gumroad link. Either way, it's your support that allows me to keep making these videos and I really do appreciate that, so thank you. Now those C major triads give us very strong notes that we can target. Um, take for example on the B string, the root and the third. The first note we targeted was the root and we bent in from a semitone below. Now for the next phrase we're going to target the third, but bend in from a whole tone below. The idea being you've got to bend from a note that's still within the key, you know, within the scale. Bending from the seventh to the root, bending from the second to the third. So we hold that bend at the peak for a moment before doing one of these very trendy side step slides and then returning back to the root. Now all we're doing with that slide is essentially we're sliding from 15 to 16 and back and then going to the root. The tricky thing is to make sure that you do it fast enough as you let go of the bend. Now that last note lands right on beat one of the bar where F comes to town. 
So that really would be the fifth of the F chord as opposed to the root of the C. Um, and now all of our map has changed, right? We're thinking of the F major triads or F major arpeggios. Those are now our target notes as opposed to the C major triads. Now this next double stop is one of my favorite sounds that you'll recognize if you've seen any of my other videos. Over the F chord, we're thinking of adding the nine or the two, and we're adding the major seventh to that and bending that major seventh up a semitone to the root, so to that F note. Beautiful sounding double stop. Add vibrato on the top of that bend as well. Of course, just to clarify, you're not bending the top string, you're only bending the B string. Now we're done with those two bars of F, so we're heading back to C. We're gonna grab 15 and 15 on the top two strings, little finger and third finger. Full step bend on the B string. Which again, if you're thinking of your C major triads, that all makes a lot of sense, right? Because this now ends up being the third and the fifth. And we're bending again from a scale note. You can refer to those as neighboring tones. And the way we do that bend, we go for this sound. So we're bending slightly slowly, and then we let it drop, and then go for a very quick revisit on the bend before bringing it straight back down. And then we follow up with, again, thinking C major, the third on top, bending into the root from the semitone below. So bending from the seventh to the root, while holding the third up on top there. Then continuing that same theme, we're thinking C major still, Top two notes of this C major triad here. We're gonna pre-bend the B string a whole step before letting it return back down to earth. So our roadmap there is really just the top two strings of these three C major triads. Now the next double stop's gonna fall on beat one of G7. So again, think G major triads. You've got this one here. Take the top two strings again, but bend in to the note on the B string from the scale degree below, so a whole tone below. And that's gonna represent our G7. So now you've got C to G7. Now we're still on the G7, so let's go ahead and grab the flat seven, 10th fret of the G string. I'd go for the second finger, and then get your little finger on the 12th fret of the B string, that's your major third, you're gonna pre-bend that G string a whole step all the way up to the root before letting it come back down and then resolving to C major. Again, thinking C major triad, just the bottom two notes of this shape, the third and the fifth. So here's that whole run from C to G7 and back. Be very liberal with your vibrato. Try and get nice vibrato on double stops as well. Get both strings moving evenly. Good boy. You hungry? Clever boy. Little polar bear. Come on, you can balance a bit longer. Those skills. So next we have a C7 for a bar going to an F. So of course the C7, as we've said many times before, is a secondary dominant in this context. It's acting as the five of four. Over that C7, we're thinking of this. Three notes from a C7 bar chord, essentially. You've got your fifth, your flat seven, and your third. Now if we bent that major third a semitone, we'd get to the fourth, that beautiful sus4 sound that we use so much. C7 sus4, underrated chord that, beautiful sound. Now what we're doing here is we're gonna pre-bend it before slowly releasing it back down and again adding some vibrato. Make sure you pull the string down, you'll have no success pushing it up. You might wanna practice it without the pre-bend for a while so you can get a feel for how far to pull the string. Now on the F chord, we're gonna play this double stop, one of the most common country double stops you'll ever hear. Again, thinking triads, right? F major triad, 
take this shape, use the bottom two strings of that, your third and your fifth, bend into the third again from a whole tone below. So that's the 12th fret of the G string bending up a whole tone while picking the 13th fret of the B string with it. We do another one of those quick double bends again before moving down on the G string to the 10th fret, then the 9th fret. So if we think about what's happening there, this is the root of F with the 5th of F, and now we're resolving onto beat 1 of a bar of C. So pushing that down a semitone now gives you the 3rd and the root of C. And then we're going to play a nice little response to that using a couple of triads. To me that's quite organ-like, sounds like a Hammond organ or something. So this would be a D minor triad in first inversion, and then a C major triad in first inversion where we're hammering on to the major third. Now this is a nice little trick you can always feel free to use. There's no D minor in the progression at that point, uh, but it's the two chord in the key of C, and it's a great little sound, it's very gospel sounding from the two to the one, just to create a bit of movement on a static one chord. Now over the G7, we'll play a little turnaround phrase that takes us from the five back to the one. This is a lick I picked up off Jim Campolongo, incredible player real master of these pedal seal bends. Definitely worth checking out if you don't already know of him. So let's look at what's happening there. Uh, we're on G7. We're doing a semitone bend at 9 on the G string to take us to the flat 7. So you can be visualizing a G7 chord. Maybe this shape would be a good one to look at. The third, the flat 7, the root, and the third again. Bending into that flat 7, while you grab the root and the third. Now hold the bend where it is. This is going to test your finger strength and your ability to keep something consistently in the same place. You're going to slide the first finger up a semitone to C. And then release the bend. And look where you end up. C major triad. So really we're going from G7 to C major. Very pretty. Now the next two bars repeat the same changes again, G7 to C. We play another turnaround. So think in G7, taking 12 and 12 on strings G and E. Now this is where things get a little tricky with your bending, because you're going to have to bend both of these notes now, but to different heights. The top string is going to bend a semitone to the flat 7, because remember we're thinking G7, the G string goes a whole tone to the 9. So we're kind of getting the sound of a G9 out of this lick. Now my advice for that kind of thing is focus on only bending the top string and you'll be surprised, but the third string will probably follow and end up in the right place by coincidence. So semitone, whole tone, then let it come back down. And again, I think we do one of those doubles. We go, and then take the same shape to the 7th fret. Again, you can clearly see the G major there, right? Just strings G and E from that triad. And then we finish with that same very common bend we mentioned earlier over the F chord. This time we're doing it on C, of course. And we're also including the top string by borrowing the little finger. And again, just to double down on what we're thinking there, C major triad, all three strings, but bending in to the third from the whole tone below. So you turn around. It's going to sound like that, G7 to C. Okay, now let's get talking about those volume swells. This is not an easy technique to learn, but I recommend doing it slowly and methodically, as with all things, and you will get there eventually, trust me. First thing you need to get a feel for is using that little finger to adjust the volume. And you don't want to try and grip it and hold it or pinch it, it's not going to work. 
you've got to roll it. You see how I'm just literally kind of rolling my whole hand down the guitar? Because that's what's going to allow you to pick and do that at the same time. So of course if you're starting out at the very beginning of a song and you know that you're going to want a volume swell into the very first note, there's no harm in preparing it with the volume off. And then pick the note and then evenly roll the volume up as you bend the string. Now as a side note, it's probably easier to practice this on non-bent notes for a while, maybe just practice running up and down scales. That kind of thing. But when you do start to engage those bends, try and match the bend of the string with the swell of the volume. There isn't really an easy way to quantify that, it's something you've got to hear and feel. And every volume part is going to have a different taper, so every time you play a different guitar you'll have to get used to it a little bit for a moment. It just takes a couple of minutes of adjustment, it's like driving a different car, you know, get a different feel for the clutch and the accelerator pedal. Now on the sheet for this you'll notice the little crescendo marks above any note that we want a volume swell. It's going to be a lot of the notes in this thing, but you know the ones that don't have that, of course you're not volume swelling the note. So for example, here's the first three bars uh, with the volume swells engaged. One, two, three. Notice that when the notes are very close together, you have very little time to shut the volume off and back on again to prepare for the next swell. This is where you've got to practice going back and forth very quickly. So for example, that first note, we may have had the luxury of being able to prepare and have the volume off already. But now we've got to hold that. We can't cut that note short. Now the next note, we have no time for preparation. You've got to take the volume off as you strike the string pretty much. It's a tricky little movement that, it's a very delicate balance of timing. The way to think about it is that you're going to downstroke on the note you want to hit, start quite high up, and as you prepare that downstroke and it gets closer to the target string, you're rolling the volume back as you go. The hope being that by the time you hit the string, the volume is basically off. And then you can just swell it back up. So the volume goes off fast and then comes back on a little slower. So those are the important factors here, being able to get the volume off and on, on demand, with a nice clean sweep of the hand, and make sure that you're getting the volume all the way off in time for picking the next new note each time. I think what would be beneficial here is if I do a playthrough using my metronome, and I'll do a close-up on just the right hand, so you can really see what's going on. And I'll go a little slower than full tempo, so this is 80 BPM. One, two, three. So let me just break down that final phrase, because there's a lot of movement in there. So we want a volume swell into that double bend at the 12th fret, and then volume swell into the 7th fret, and then into that final bend also. So like I say, it's not going to feel easy, it's a very unnatural technique really, but once you do get used to it, you get addicted to it, and you can start to use it a lot, and you'll get a real command over when and where you can do it. Obviously you could use a volume pedal, but it's kind of boring. You know, it doesn't sound the same to me, it doesn't feel the same. Um, and I love the fact that the Telecaster was designed with these kinds of things in mind, so I'm going to keep on doing it this way. Thank you very much. Now a little bit of tone talk. 
I definitely recommend doing those pedal steel bends on the bridge pickup. It really needs that extra boldness and brightness to help it cut through and to help those notes sustain. Because you really do need good sustain for this kind of thing. Again, that's why the Telecaster is so perfect for it. I'm also quite particular about the sweep I like on the volume pot. This is perfect. You know, Nacho knows this stuff and he gets it right from the get-go. On my other guitars, I've had to try lots of different pots in there over the years to get ones that I like the taper of. It gradually comes on. I'm plugged into my Lazy J20 amp, which is basically a, a modern take on the Fender Tweed Deluxe amp, the 5E3 circuit. And I have it set clean, uh, so the volume's at about 3, tone's at 6. And it has a really nice Celestian Blue speaker in there, with a very present mid-range. And it doesn't get harsh or ice picky, like some of the old Jensen speakers can. But if you find that your amp gives you too much of a harsh tone on the bridge pickup of a telly, then you've got a tone control here. That's what that's for. You've got to roll it back a bit. You know, not everything has to be all the way up all the time. You've got to work for your tone, and you've got to know how to dial it in and sculpt it to how you want it to sound. It's very rare that I just leave the tone all the way up. Most of the time it's about halfway back or three quarters up or, you know, bridge pickup I tend to like it all the way up to be fair, but the neck pickup I like to roll it back a bit for those softer, jazzier tones. It's all just part of the tactile fun of a Telecaster, you know, you've got to be very in touch with your tone and let your ears be the judge. Don't judge things by sight, judge them by sound and make adjustments on the fly. The strings on this guitar are Pyramid 10 to 46s. Uh, they're really nice strings. These are called their Max Performance strings, and they're quite affordable. Um, really nice nickel strings. The pick I'm using today is from Honey Picks. It's got a really nice feel to it. It's about the same size as a Jazz 3, uh, but it's beveled in a really nice way. Great feeling material, very solid, quite thick as well. Really nice full-toned pick. So I hope you guys have fun practicing these things. I think to close out, I'll give you some recommended listening. Check out Jim Campolongo, as I mentioned earlier. Check out Roy Buchanan. And of course, check out some pedal steel players. Uh, you know, Speedy West, Lloyd Green, Buddy Emmons, Vance Terry, all of those guys. As I always say, it's really important that you can hear this stuff in order to get it to come out of your hands accurately. And that requires a lot of listening. So as always, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for joining me. Um, if you could do all the usual stuff, that would really help this channel. You know, like, subscribe, tell people about it, share the links, all of that. Um, and I'll see you guys next week for another lesson. All right, take care.